Are you close enough? Uh, you can hear us? Uh, Did it start? Hmm? It, start, it started, oh. yes. <laughs> so, we're Hi. here with Megan Smith. Hi. Um, so, um, Megan, I, I don't even know if you need an introduction, but she's basically the, the person who runs um, all the computer science programs in the United States. I, I'm not, not really, sure. not really. Okay, I'll tell you what I do. Yeah. I'm the Chief Technology Officer of the United States, and that's a job that's it's an advisor job for President Obama, and he started it with this administration. The idea is to have kind of an innovator office, like to, to do data, science, and innovation on behalf of the American people and the world. And so I get to work on amazing things, and we try to capacity build our government, and it's so great because Romania is similarly capacity building the government to be a digital, open, data-driven government. That's what we're working on. And today at the keynote, at the final part of Grace Hopper, you spoke yeah. about a movie coming out and you saw also the trailer. Yeah. It's yeah. amazing. Can you tell us a bit about sure. that? Sure, yeah. So we're here at Grace Hopper, you guys know. So look at all these people who are here. Let's <laughs> make it look around this way. Okay, so tonight is that it's called the Grace Hopper celebration. We have to have a what? dance. We're having a dance because Anita Borg won one. You know, we were talking about the fact that. The truth is that women and men have all been part of making computers and inventing computer science since the beginning of, of this industry. In fact, it's a woman named Ada Lovelace who worked together with Charles Babbage. And Charles Babbage thought of the first mechanical computer. And Ada imagined that there would be an idea of programming of algorithms and wrote the first algorithms in the 1800s. So she's the founder of computer science. And then as things got came forward, we got into the beginning of the digital age. And so you th see things like World War II, where humanity invented uh, coding, and, and really computer science, modern computer science began. And the Polish team did some of the early inventions to crack the Enigma codes. And, uh, and then that was really done at Bletchley Park. And it was two thirds women, uh, one third men, technical people doing that work, Alan Turing and Joan Clark. And you see this in the imitation game movie. But the truth is that most of the stories get dropped. And so we were talking about that today, and one of the greatest stories that's about to be told in film is called Hidden Figures. And it's about the African-American women mathematical team that led all the math work for the Apollo uh, mission and the early Mercury and Gemini teams, and Katherine Johnson especially, who was the mathematician who did the, the, uh, did the calculations for Apollo, for John Glenn, the first American around, and for Alan Shepard, the first American in space. A black woman born two years before women got the vote in the United States did that work. And so I encourage you to look at her story on, the, on makers.com, Katherine Luke K. Johnson. And so the president gave her a medal of freedom uh, last year, and so we were celebrating her, and this new film, Hidden Figures, is about her and the whole team, Dorothy Vaughn and others, who led those early calculations and leadership, what became the space race and modern space uh, industry. You know, it's truly an honor to be seeing you, especially from you, and uh, what I want to ask you right now, so basically we've seen a lot of progress lately. We're not quite there, we're not quite close to the We're a long way from there. Yeah, by <laughs> but we're making progress. Yeah, so what are the next steps? What's the way forward? It's really great to hear one of the speakers at the Tech Exec Forum, this guy who uh, had wrote and written a book about feminism, and he was talking about how people who have privilege and have always had whatever they just assume they can do it, they're not aware uh, of the privilege that they have. And so helping them with digital tools and awareness and other things can help them see how to include other people. They're not thinking about it. So nobody, none of us created it. They didn't create this, we didn't create this problem, but there's tremendous racism and, and sexism and ageism and uh, discrimination, misogyny, uh, socioeconomic, uh, homophobia, and you know, on and on and on against religions and other things. And really, you know, uh, it's so fun to talk to astronauts because they see us from space. Okay, we got noise. Okay, what's up? Uh, and so, um, they really have a perspective, like, we all live together on this planet. You know, and I think, as I, my son uh, came out of the movie Martian, and he said, uh, he said, you know, someday I think Mars will be like Canada, and the Earth will be like Ethiopia, where everybody came from. <laughs> and I'm like, that's right, Alex. So, uh, so I think it's like that, and we're, um, we're getting there. And if you, a friend of mine, Steve Perlman, he always says, if you could go 1,000 years from now and look at us, you would see, of course, all this awesome stuff we invented and did, and you know, the internet and airplanes and all that, but the real thing you would see from last hundred years, this hundred years, maybe the next, is that humanity is coming to the table in a way that wasn't true for all time. 
so much discrimination and now everybody's coming in and we're only part way there as you said yeah but we're getting there and what's kind of cool is that computer science and coding and data science lets us see things that we could never see and so these are really the modern important tools to have so it's really awesome that all of you guys have stepped up to learn and that you're reaching out to bring more people in can you also tell us what is your background how did you start when did you first think about getting into computer science what, i'm actually i'm a mechanical engineer so i use coding some but i really love to make physical things so i work, used to work on bicycles uh, my mom started the bike club for western new york so we used to make and fix bikes I used to work on green energy president carter was putting uh, solar panels on the White House when I was a kid and we had our teachers required us to do science fair projects which is a really important thing because kids should do real things not just hear about it or read about it or be bored by it or intimidated but do it and so we got to work on all kinds of things and uh, when I was in college we got to race a solar powered car across the continent of Australia we built the car and made it to super it was fun in a the first race yeah so you just get out there and you do the things it's mostly with each other, right? We work together and uh, in collaboration because um, everybody's awesome. So if you can team up, wow. And I think that all people have that skill, women especially have that skill. And so uh, we should do more and more. Can you tell us a message for the cadet community back at home in Romania and for women around the globe for that matter? Sure, well mostly I think uh, I was lucky to take acoustics from Professor Bose, like Bose Electronics and Bose Speakers, and he always said follow your passion and I thought it was great advice so I like to pass it on because his advice was if you look at what you love to do and you do that, you're just going to be better at it because it's something you're interested in. And if you don't know yet what you love to do, try a lot of things and be really open-minded and team up with people and see what's, see what's interesting. And, and then the only thing that goes with that is that he used to also say was kind of keep your bags packed. And what he meant by that was don't run away from difficult things. But if people are really jerks, like there's lots of great people in the world, so you don't need to work with them. Tell them, try hard, but then eventually go do something else with some people who have a clue. And then they can get a clue and then they can join you. So, you know, kindness is as important as knowledge. And so kindness needs to be part of computer science and needs part of any kind of environment because everybody's got something to bring. You know, today at a keynote, you concluded with an African proverb. Can you, yeah. can you conclude today with an African proverb? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, the one, this is, not, this is actually an African proverb that's really important, which is, uh, um, it's about inclusion and right now we have a lot of challenges in the world and a lot of people feel like they're not included but we know what this world is like when you can have these tools and be part of this really interesting network community so there's a proverb that says that the youth that are not initiated into the village will burn it down to feel its warmth and so I think it's really important to think about our young people and how are we including them and how are we taking our neighbors kid to work day as well as our kids and so thinking about any place you live there's usually people who have great resource and people who might not everybody's really talented so how are you mixing it up one of our challenges in the United States is take a city like Baltimore we have some of our poorest youth and at the same time we have the team from America that went to Pluto so I think that the Pluto team should give some internships to the youth who have nothing and then we can start mixing it up and so we have to think through how to do that and we have to enable both groups it's no one's fault none of this is anyone's fault but we inherit it and so we have to do something about it take a peek that's wonderful sure. so so nice nice awesome. i want to give you uh, a pocket cadet to remember yeah. as well so this is our <laughs> lego back you. at home i love it yeah thanks guys thanks so much for everything yeah. 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 And also, you guys are one of the leaders in the Open Government Partnership. So look up that online, and yeah. it's how we're collaborating on digital open government. So yeah. Romania is one yeah. of the leaders. Thanks. Can you take a picture of you? Sure. Okay.